The Allies had landed in Normandy, France in June 1944. Mid-August, they broke through, liberating Paris, liberating Brussels, and liberating Luxembourg City. Now, many people thought that the Netherlands would be next. Where the Netherlands had just seen five days of active war during the German invasion of the Netherlands, it now became a long and dreadful struggle with a famine on top of it. This here is the story of the liberation of the Netherlands, the end of World War II. Good to have you back to the channel and if you don't know who I am, my name is Stefan, I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I'm hustling history for you and if you like that please consider subscribing and do not forget to hit that notification bell. Last episode I talked about the liberation of Belgium and Luxembourg. This went fairly swift. By the time the Allies were in the south of the Netherlands, the Germans counterattacked in the Ardennes mid-December. The ensuing Battle of the Bulge ended with an elite victory in January 1945 when the German panzers had run out of fuel. To explain the liberation of the Netherlands we need to go back to September 1944. Early that month the Belgian cities of Brussels and Antwerp were liberated by the Allies and many people in the Netherlands believed that they would soon be liberated as well. Therefore, they started to celebrate prematurely. This day, the 5th of September, is also known as Mad Tuesday or Dolle Dinsdag. Even the Germans believed it. Rumors spread it that Breda was already liberated, which wasn't the case, and the Germans, in many occasions, withdrew from their posts. But soon find out that the Allies weren't moving in because the Allies had reached the end of their capabilities. Therefore, the occupation of the Netherlands lasted longer, and this had devastating results. Maastricht, located all the way in the south of the Netherlands, was the first Dutch city to be liberated by the Allies in September 1944, and shortly after, the Allies launched the most well-known military operation on Dutch soil, I'm talking about Operation Market Garden. British Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery presented his operation plans to Supreme Allied Commander Dwight D. Eisenhower. This plan, Operation Market Garden, consisted of capturing the bridges across the main Dutch rivers here in order to liberate Eindhoven, Nijmegen and Arnhem and therefore circumvent the German Siegfried Line, which was located here, so that the Allies could push into the heart of Germany after they were successful. Montgomery believed that the war would be over before Christmas. It didn't. What went wrong? Operation Market Garden consisted of an airborne attack by the British, American and Polish paratroopers. Their mission was to capture a series of bridges across two channels, the rivers Maas, Waal and Rhine. The drop zones of these airborne forces were too far from their objectives. Also, the radio communication failed and the SS Panzer Corps that was stationed near Arnhem reacted much quicker than anticipated. The Allies fought brave but were soon isolated and had to pull back. The Allies lost 15,000 men, of which 6,000 captured, half of them were wounded. Yet, Operation Market Garden was not a complete failure since Eindhoven and Nijmegen were liberated. In order to secure the Allies salient, as you can see here, the Allies moved east in order to capture Overloon and Venray, and this led to the Battle of Overloon. Here, the Allies suffered 2,000 deaths and lost many tanks, yet they proclaimed victory. Following the victory, the Allies now moved west during Operation Pheasant, liberating Den Bosch, Tilburg, Breda, which is my family's town, and Rosendaal, which is my hometown. Breda was liberated by Polish forces. Rosendaal was liberated by the British Polar Bear Division. We still have a monument dedicated to those heroes. Therefore, the most of the province of Nord Brabant was now liberated. The eastern parts, as well as the northeastern part of the province of Limburg, that were located east of the Meuse River, were liberated after the Battle of the Bulge in 1945. From early October, the Allies started perhaps the most grueling operation during the liberation of the Netherlands. And I'm talking about the Battle of the Schelde, which was fought right here in the province of Zeeland. Why did this battle took 
place. Well, to explain that, we need to go to the liberation of Belgium. Now, I mentioned that the city of Antwerp, located here in Belgium, was liberated early September. Now, the Allies, they had run into supply problems. However, the city of Antwerp had many ports, so therefore the Allies could resupply their troops. The thing is, the Germans were still in control of the west of Schelde. And across here, there were coastal batteries and in the water there were mines. So, however, the Allies had now the ports of Antwerp in their hands, they could not make use of it. So, therefore, the province of Zeeland had to be liberated. Now, as you can see here on this map, and this was made this operation also very dreadful, is that the Germans had inundated, flooded many parts of Zeeland. So, this made the Allied advance very hard. The Battle of the Schelde consisted of four operations. Operation 1. The access to Zuid-Beveland had to be secured. It led to heavy fighting on Hoge Heide. October 13, 1944 is known as Black Friday for the Canadians that fought there who suffered heavy losses. A few days later, the access to the province of Zeeland was secured. The second operation was named Operation Switchback and the Allies needed to secure the German bridgehead Breskens. The Breskens pocket was defended by 10,000 heavily entrenched German armed with heavy machine guns and mortars that were ordered to hold out till the last man and were located behind the Leopold Channel. The Canadians made slow progress. An amphibic attack at Hoofdplaat on the 9th of October came as a surprise to the Germans. Yet, they managed to hold out till early November. Stiff German resistance and the hard terrain made this operation a grueling one. Operation 3 was named Operation Vitality, which started at the end of October and consisted of capturing Zuid-Beveland. The attackers were once again hindered by the terrain, which made use of armored units very ineffective. Over land and via amphibic attacks, the Canadians managed to capture Zuid-Beveland. And Operation 4 consisted of the conquest of Walcheren Island. This island, which also played an important role during the Battle of Zeeland in May 1940, was a true German fortress. The Allies came up with a destructive plan, destroyed the dikes and led the island flood. More than 150 Dutch civilians died in the raid of Westkapelle. Amphibic landings here and at Vlissingen as well as an attack at Sloedam secured the island. Also Dutch special forces that were trained by the British took part in this operation. November 8, 1944, the Battle of the Schelde was over. The Allies had suffered 130,000 losses. The failure of Operation Market Garden had horrifying results. For those living in the western part of the country, I'm talking about this part. As historian Anthony Beaver wrote, the Dutch north of the River Maas would remain under German control until the end of the war, in the grip of famine exacerbated by their occupiers. When railway men went on strike to help the Allies at the time of Operation Market Garden, Arthur Seisintquart, the Austrian who headed the Reichskommissariat Niederlande, stopped the import of any food as a reprisal. The population was reduced to eating tulip bulbs and any sugar beets which the Germans had not taken. Children were paralyzed by rickets and malnutrition exposed everyone to disease, especially typhoid and diphtheria. Around 20,000 Dutchmen would die during this Dutch famine, also known as the Hunger Winter or the Hunger Winter. The west of the country would remain under German control till the 5th of May. And this wasn't the case for the people in the north of the country. And now we're gonna talk about this area here. So Operation Market Garden had failed. So therefore this area was also liberated later than planned. This time by troops that moved in via Germany once they had conquered these parts. The Allied troops pushed into the north of the Netherlands via Germany. French paratroopers were dropped in Drenthe and the Allies liberated one town after another. The last big battle was fought in the city of Groningen. German units fought alongside Dutch and Belgian SS troops. Because of the narrow streets, house-to-house -house fighting followed. It left the old city center largely in ruins. 
When we assess the war damage in the Netherlands during World War II, most people talk about the damage that was perpetrated by the Germans. For example, the Battle of Rotterdam. However, we should not overlook the war damage that was perpetrated by the Allies. In 1943, Rotterdam was bombed for a second time, this time by the Allies, with around 400 people killed. In February 1944, the city of Nijmegen was bombed by Allied planes who mistook it for a German city and 800 Dutch died. In March 1945, Den Haag was bombed for strategic purposes with around 500 killed. And there are many more examples. Now, if you are Dutch or you have Dutch roots, perhaps one of your family members witnessed one of these elite bombing campaigns. If so, feel free to leave a comment down below and share it with us. Perhaps this is hard to believe, but bear with me. More Dutch people died because of elite air raids than of German air raids. It's true. On the 5th of May, the Germans signed the unconditional surrender in the city of Wageningen. Now, this here is not the end of war aggression in the Netherlands. On the 7th of May, over 100 Dutchmen were gunned down by German members of the Kriegsmarine on Dam Square in Amsterdam. 30 of them died. Also, on the island of Tessel, located right here, Georgian units that fought for the Wehrmacht now rebelled against their overlords. The fighting ended on the 20th of May 1945. Now, I will cover these conflicts in several episodes, so make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, so you'll be notified when that video comes out. I am almost absolutely sure that you have watched my best viewed video about the German invasion of the Netherlands. If you haven't, hmm, go watch it now, it's here, right here. If you haven't subscribed, which I hardly doubt, but if you haven't, there's one final chance, click right here. I want to thank you for watching and uh, till soon.